personal agenda of ourselves to be submissive under the will of God. So we need to get submissive under the will of God. I don't think I want to be in a service for five hours. He tell me he want me to come preach for him, but I say, five hours. He said, no, we don't want this being for five hours. But that's a long time to be in church. But Jesus said, I'm sending you forth as what? Lamb among wolves. Do you see it in the text? Go your ways. by three, ten and three. Go your ways. Behold, I sent you forth as lambs among wolves. All right? When you go there as a, as a Christian, when you start to preach the gospel, when you start to minister to the people around you, remember you are a lamb and you are in the midst of what? Wolves. And what wolves going to do? They're going to try to tear you apart. Wolves are try to tear you apart. And I trust that we have no wolves among us. Can you imagine you in your house, you're a Christian and you have wolves living in with you? There are wolves, a sheep dressed up in what? Wolves clothing. So we need to get rid of that wolf in us. And we need to become sheep and that's what God wants us to do. Go there and make sheep out of the people. So that people will come under the Lordship of Jesus, be submissive to his will. Amen? Everybody want to say, I am my own man. I am my own woman. You can't tell me what to do. Nobody wants to tell you what to do. People just want you to do what is right. People just want to put you on the path where God wants you to be. When you, let me tell you, there's never a man or a woman who has come in contact with God, who have done what God has asked them to do, who has been faithful to God, who God has not blessed. God will bless every man. God will bless every woman. God will give you the desires of your heart once you put your will, your, your faith, your confidence, and your trust in Him and be submissive to His will. Will you say, I can get that without getting it? What will it profit a man if you gain this whole world and don't have Christ? Or what, will it, what, will, what, what, what will you give in exchange for your one soul? Money? Do you know the people are there actually selling their souls for money? I know. You know that people are actually going to some people and asking them to do some stuff so that they can get some money? But listen to me, we rather die than to get that kind of money. I tell people, I, I, I admonish everybody in this church, if you know such a person, stay your distance from them because guess what? You're not going to get to even talk to them about Christ when they're so deeply involved with that underworld stuff. They're not going to even hear you. The Bible says we must be careful that we not throw our pearls among the swine. Lest the, the swine trample upon it. Now the next thing we got to do is, whenever we go out, many people say, well I can't go in the gospel because I don't have this, I don't have that, I don't have the next. Jesus said, take nothing for your journey. If you're going to preach, you don't have to worry about, I got to carry a whole wardrobe. Carry what's on your back. Go with what you have. Don't worry about I don't have no money. He said, don't worry about the money. You go with what you have. When you're in the land, God has someone there to take care of you. Do we have that kind of faith? Do we have that kind of faith? We don't have that kind of faith. But God is calling his people to have that kind of faith. God is looking for young people. In this new generation, God is calling you to have a radical faith. And let me tell you, <laughs> While we play around, time is fleeing. Let me tell you, while we play around, time is fleeing. 22 years ago, when I started in this church, in that building right next to the door where the garbage bin is, where we started, I was a young man. My hair was black. My beard was black. I was full of energy. My stomach was in like this. After 22 years, for 22 years, I preached in this area. I continue to preach in this area. And now look at me after 22 years. Mother Star came in here as a young, bouncing people, woman. Face full of like this, excited. But after 22 years, look what has happened. Yes. Time. You only get it this time. You say, I'm young. Young youth only stay with you for a moment. You would only stay with you, some of you, when you came here, you were teenagers. Now you're hitting close to 40. 
<laughs> some of you likely to be 40 this year, and next year some of you are going to turn 40. When I was that age, I, was, I had to sacrifice everything. I had to put everything on the altar. So, and, and you're not going to have a chance when you waste it. So why are you young? Do what you have to do. I was in Memphis the other day, an 18 year old girl. She preached the gospel. She used her talent to sing. And listen to me, I asked them, how much did you bring? You pay to bring her in here? They said, we gave her $3,100 and she gave us a break. They paid her $3,100 and they said, she was given, she gave us a break. The next one came and he, and, 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 and he preached. She preached. How much did you give her? She got $2,500 and that was a break. Listen to me, it is not the money, you know. It's the, it is the gift thing. When God gives you that gift, I think we shouldn't, we shouldn't put a price on the gift. I think people should use their gift for the glory of God. But these people are getting paid for the glory. I'm not, I'm not with that part of it, but I believe that if, they, if you really preach good, and there are people there, they're going to bless you, and whatever they bless you with, you should be thankful. But God is, um, the point I wanted to make is that God is calling young people, and young people feel that it's out of fashion, out of style, to be a Christian. Out of style and out of fashion, to get and say, I'm an evangelist, I'm a woman of God, I'm a, I'm a man of God. We, we feel that we have, it, it's, it's a sin to, to, to try to rise up in the kingdom of God. Is something wrong with that? No. no. I don't see anything wrong with that. And so Jesus is saying, we must take nothing for the journey. Let's go empty handed, but let's go. Yeah. Some people in the neighborhood, they think I'm preaching because I want to sound good or I'm preaching because some people don't know that God, 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 in, 19, in 2003, for those of you who didn't know I was a policeman, I was just about near to be commissioner in the police force. I don't look like anyone who near look like a commissioner because now I look like a reverend. But when I was there, I looked like a policeman and I was very, I was not a, a very humble fellow then. So many people were seeing that I could one day run this country from a crime perspective, but guess when God called me, he stripped me of all of that craziness. And I can make a decision. I said, God, I'm going to come to the church. And God said, I want you to preach every day. Every day I want you to preach every day. God just preach, preach, preach. And I started it. And a couple months after that, I said, you know, I need to go. I, mean, I think I, I can make a contribution bigger than this. And I went to College of the Bahamas. And, and God said, if you go to College of the Bahamas, I'm going to give you four years. And I'm going to make you, bring you out of there. And whatever you ask for, you're going to get. I went into College of the Bahamas. I spent four years from 2007 to 2011. I was the most old there. If I wasn't the oldest man in there, certainly I wasn't far from it. And guess what? I'm just I'm testifying now about what, how God can bring us back to office next to me. While I was there, God said, I drive him in my car, and God said, you know something? When I spin around, um, um, Yellow Elder, I was going to, to, to look for something for Perry. I was coming by him, and God said to me, I want you, you're going to be the president of the College of the Bahamas Union of Students. And I said, what? God, you know how old I am? God said, yeah, when you go back, you talk with this young man there, and you all two together, I'm going to make you, to put you, I'm going to put you in a history book. And stupid as I was, I went back and tell the young man, I said, me and you will run and we can win. <laughs> and I said, this will be our slogan, dare to struggle, dare to win. And at 50 something years of age, <laughs> I ran in there and we ran. And over 5,000 people voted in that election. I had three opponents who were young, young people. And, and the Lord was, God gave me such great victory. The people said that was the greatest victory they ever saw in the history of the COB. The greatest thing I know. And I said, I, 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 I had people paying for my tuition that I did not even know was paying for. My, I had more people trying to pay for my tuition while I was in there that I could count and stick out. When God have you on a destiny, God will make sure that you get back on track. You know something? What <laughs> people say, they sent me to Doris Johnson. I teach taught at Doris. I said, I can't be here. I, I said, I'm coming back to the church. Then the, something tell me, man, you gotta go again. I went and I got a job at St. Anne's. They hired me right away. When they saw me, they said, you the man we're looking for. And they hired me. And then while I was there teaching, God said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do such a great thing for you all, the students who you teach. They all are gonna be blessed. 
And children were blessed. Because, of, and then, last year, God said to me, you have a work to do. Your job is to preach every day. Every day. And I said, God, you want me to preach? God said, leave that job and come and preach every day. And I, I, I decided, right in this church praying, I said, God, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave that job. And I came back, and God said, preach every day. I hesitated. God said, I don't want you to preach every day here. I'm giving you a time for you to get back into, into the groove. And God said, here's how you go do, about doing it. And I began to preach on the street. Some people think I'm preaching to try to attract people's attention, or trying to, no, I'm preaching because God gave me a commission to do it. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you, if the, if the pastors and the leaders of the church would go and, and, and preach as God wants us to preach, Nassau, the crime in Nassau will drop. Amen. Young men who can't do nothing, they'll be powerless under the power of God because when the word of God hit the air, everybody got to stand to attention. The devil got to run. Amen. When the word of God take over the atmosphere, you ever know, let me tell you what I mean. Every day. I'm a dress up in the trousers. What happened to these skirts and the blouses? Why can I man see you in your dresses? Cause the things and the jar not pleasing. And every day I'm a wish of vanity. And the greatest lust is jewelry. Jar can lick the diseases. Hey, are the most dangerous diseases. I'm talking about the yellow phantitis. The other one is the poor man like this. I practice and you wonder your details. You see? And every day them eternal Bible pages. Now you want to see something? You keep playing that same song and all them reggae song. And them say, one drop, give me some of that. Sensei, I give me some of that. Sensei. And you know something? And everybody would start. One drop, could that take over the air? So what God said, we gotta take over the air with his word. And when the word of God hit the air, when the word of God hit the atmosphere, somebody gotta hear what God said the Lord. Yeah. And so that, that's why I have to preach. I'm under commission to preach the gospel. I am under commission to preach the gospel. Do you be ashamed? You can't be ashamed. You can't say, well, God, I do shame. You may look stupid. We know we look stupid. I know I look stupid. I know it sounds stupidly. Early in the morning, sunny, I am under a commission. God said do it, and I got to do it. And God is telling you today that you got to do it. You And you want to see a change? We're going to see the change. We're going to close now. When you go to people's house, eat what they put before you. I want steak. No, I don't want a steak. Whatever you have in the house, that's what I'm going to eat. That's what God calls us to. To a life of simplicity. And let me tell you. Honey, let me tell you. I am convinced beyond a doubt that if you do God's work, God will do your work. Yeah. My sister, God rest her dead, she died. And she used to say to me, Perry, God told me, if I do his work, he will do my work. And my sister never commit herself to doing the work of God. She stopped, then she stopped. Yeah. She never really said, God, and this was the most gifted woman I have ever seen. This was the most smart, the most intellectual, not, not only intellectual, but the most I said gifted with the interpretation and this was a woman of, she was a leader, anything she ran for, she was sure to get, God had a gift on her. But she said she refused, she refused to do what God wanted her to do. Y'all yes. still with me? Right. She refused to let go all and then let God do the great mighty things that he wanted God to do. But let me tell you something. If you put as much time in the work of God that you put into everything else, let me tell you, God is going to far outpay you for what you have done than what people will give you. He's going to far outpay you. The dividends is going to be very huge. Let me tell you, you're gonna, your, your cup is going to run over. You're going to have more than enough. You're going to have more than enough. Everything that you touch will turn into proverbial gold. While people are worrying and wondering, where am I going to get money from? God said, I am your provider. Yeah. I am your, your bank account. I am the Lord God. I am the one. I want everything. Yeah. If you begin to put trust in God, yes. hallelujah, let me tell you, it's nothing more sweeter. To use a word, that's the only word I can use to describe. I'm, 
God and the fellowship with God. Some people see me here and they wonder, what are you be doing here? What are you doing here? 99% of the time I've been trying to, to hear from God. 99% of the time I be here trying to read my Bible or trying to pray because I believe that we need to hear from God. God wants you to come. God said, I want you to come. Come and let's get in, into my secret place. Yeah. When you get in that secret place, yeah. when you enter that secret place, it's going to be a difference. Amen. No matter what man may say, no matter what man may do, man can never do anything to you what God can't undo. And if God be for you, no man can be against you. What does it take? What does it take? It takes listening to hear what God has to say. You must accept what God has to say. You must be operating in what God has to say. I heard God, God tell me I got to preach. And guess why I preach it all I hear on the door? Bam, 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 bam. I preach it. Bam, 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 bam. Who show up? Mr. Miller. Mr. Miller come with his, walk, with his stick. Wherever I hear you, I had to come. But when I look, and guess who I see show up? Mr. Benneby. Uh -huh. Mr. Benneby said, I heard you preaching from way down there. And so it took Mr. Benneby approximately uh, 30, 40 minutes to get from around there to here. But God, look who God sent. Mr. Miller was who saying, just come with the hospital. He came on his cane because he said he heard the preaching. Yeah. Mr. Benneby came from way over there. He said he heard came because he heard the preaching. God is calling us to be preachers. God is calling us to live up a standard on the job. Yeah. Listen, who do you think you are? I am a child of the king. That's who I think I am. Why did you ask me that question? Because you, you look like you think you are, you are better than anyone. No, but you can look like this too. You can look the same way that I look. Because that's only the way it looks to you. Now let me say, how do we exercise what we have? How do you exercise it? I'm closing. Listen to me. We exercise what it takes by power. While I lay down stretch up before the Lord this morning, God said to me, son, you got to exercise my, my, my plan with authority. Someone say authority. authority. You can't come weak. So when I tell this to young man, sit down in the church. Don't do that in the church. They say, oh, he half and he gruff. I'm not half and I'm gruff. But God said we got to exercise with authority. We got to exercise with authority. That word authority, you have two words that the, the Greeks use. One exousia and one dunamis. Dunamis comes, or dynamite, comes from the, du the, the Greek word dunamis. We know when we hear about dynamite, we know that's explosion. Boom! Fire in the hole! Boom! And everything goes up. That's dunamis. God said, I want you to operate with dynamic power. Yeah. I want when you touch people, and so some people say, when you touch the woman, fall, so I ain't gonna fall. Listen, when the Holy Spirit hits you, you're not gonna get it all you up. When a man push you down, something can hold you up. But when God touch you, in nothing can hold you up. When the power of God touch you, touches you. And so God said he wants us to operate firstly with dunamis, with power. And I will prove that power this morning. Before we leave, I want to prove that power this morning. Because somebody may be sick, and guess what the Bible said? The power is in you. The power is in you. It is your faith that, that makes you whole. It is your faith. It is your faith. It is your faith, not my faith. It is your faith. That's where you get the deliverance. So you need, firstly, you need to operate in God with a dynamic power. You need dynamic power. Someone said dynamic power. Dynamic. And guess what? You can have it, but you can lay back and say, oh, I tell you. You gotta tell that devil, I laid him on my, on my back and I said, devil, you have no authority over me. You have no control over me. I command you, send him to go in Jesus' name. Amen. The first person you gotta do as a physician, you gotta heal yourself. I said, devil, I rebuke you. Devil, I resist you. Devil, I reject you. In the name of Jesus, I command you to go in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So I took dominion over myself. We gotta take dominion over ourselves because the devil of some of us bind. Someone said bind. The only person can lose you in the first instance, you gotta lose yourself. Jesus said, physician, heal yourself. You can be taking abuse for years. People can be abusing you. We had heard about a story, a young man. Listen, you'd be surprised.
surprised to know the majority of those young black preachers in America, they have a criminal record. Mm -hmm. One of the young men who, who was with us, he, being a, he was a drug dealer. He, 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 he was locked up, put in the prison, break out of the prison. Wow. Get, change his name. Yeah. Was caught, sent back to jail for 16 years. And, and, and he got saved in prison. He started, he started something in jail that transformed America. The prisoners were bringing in tithing into a bucket. He said, you don't have no money, but you have a soap. You don't have no money, but you have a, you have a, a little shaving cream. You have a razor. Tied what you have into this box. And the prisoners then began to tie it in the box. And from that, from that same thing, they were able to start feeding new prisoners. They were able to feed people in the community. When God take him out, took him out of prison and put him on parole, he started a feeding program. Now he has one of the biggest feeding programs in, 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 in Memphis. This next fella, he was sentenced to prison for life, for murder. And God delivered him out of jail. Wow. This man is down now an elder. Can you imagine a former policeman being driven by a former convict? Mm. He drove us around in his nice Jeep. Yes. And, his, huh? yes. and now when the first person, the man who was in jail, who, who the, they, they, they would break out of jail, and they had him in a cell, he couldn't, he now is a chaplain in the jail. He, he got saved and God made him the chaplain. When he got into the jail, he just put the little card over it and all the gates open up. <laughs> when he got to prison, he called him to jail and said, open up cell 11, open up cell 10. And he has access in the jail. Ready before that, he was in the jail, couldn't get out. Now when he pressed this thing, the, the, the cell doors open up for him. Listen, you all hearing me? This next fella, he was convicted for murder. He came out of jail and the woman who he in company with, she was messed up. Messed up bad. But he is an, she is an evangelist and he is an elder in the church. We take too much for granted. We think that all is well. But we need to begin to understand that we have it too easy. That's why we do not want to do what God wants us to do. Because we, and guess what? As far as I'm concerned, our country is small. There's nothing much we have. We have nothing actually. If some of us was in America, we'd have been better off in terms of material things. Because you can't even buy a house over here. But God, if you have God with you, and I hear God saying, some of you, three of you in this, in this room, three of you in this house were asking God for a house. Three persons in this room. I'm only gonna minister to the first three persons who come to this altar, who you know, you, if you know you were praying, and asking God for a house. Don't come here. Don't come here. My God. Not, not yet. My God. Three places in this room. You've been praying and asking God for a house. Today is your day. Showing you wrong places. But that's all right. I don't mind if you go. I miss you bad. <laughs> Hallelujah. But listen, so we exercise in, remember what I said, because that's where we're heading. We exercise, we're going to show the power today. We exercise in power, and then we exercise in authority. Please don't tune me up yet. We exercise in power, and we exercise in authority. And some people would think it's impossible for God to give them a little house. But when I talk about authority, authority comes from the Greek word exousia. It comes from the Greek word, keep, keep focusing with me just for a few minutes. It comes from the Greek word exousia, which means a delegated authority. Someone is in charge. And what they do, Mother Newton, would you come here, please? I'm delegating, Mother Newton, can you please um, take that to Randy for me, please, and tell her, um, I said, give you, give you her book in her hands for me, um, and take it from her. What I did, I delegated, authority to Mother Newton, and I've gotten something because I delegated my power to her. Now Mother Newton, go and tap Randy on the cheeks for me. I delegate, and she tapped Randy on the cheeks. She found some resistance, but nevertheless, she did it anyhow. That's what you call, what Jesus has done, is Jesus is, say, is saying, I am giving you dynamite power, power to cast things down, power to break things up, and where you get this power from, I have given it to you. I'm giving 
given you all of this explosion. I've given you the right to act on my behalf. You are my lawyer. You do business for me. God said, I'm calling some people to do business for me. God said, I want to bless some people. God said, I want to use some men and I want to use some women mightily in this last and evil days. God said, my redemption draws nigh and so is my coming. God said, I'm coming, I'm coming like a thief in the night. God said, there's a lightning flash in the east and coming down to the west and so will be my coming. God said, he wants us to be ready and when he comes. And so my friends today, your job as I close is to go there and preach the kingdom. Someone say the kingdom. kingdom. Let the world know that there's something opposite to what you see going on. There's something opposite, hallelujah. Mm, some people here like this. There's something opposite from the gambling house. God said that you don't have to gamble with your money. Some of you just gamble and you don't like when I say that. But God said, yeah, you, you do that, but God said, if you want to keep that, that's fine. But God said, there's, there's the kingdom of heaven. God said, I've given you a better way to do it. We got to preach what God says. Some people say, well, I'm, I could go there and wink at a man, and when I wink, the man give me some money. God said, well, listen, you don't have to do that because I have a better way. And the kingdom of God is God's way, which is the better way. And we as believers, we got to preach the kingdom of God. And then God says, we must heal the sick. He said, I give you power to heal the sick. God said, I'm giving you a harvest, a power to reap, reap the harvest. So what are we going to do today? We're going to reap the harvest by state. Five people in this house. You need a healing. Five people in the, there may be more. I'm only going to minister to the first five that reach to the altar for healing. One, two, five, the first five. <laughs> Wait, five. That's one, two, three, four, one more. Five. Mother Stowe is right here. Yeah. Well, guess what? You all two can come. Because guess what? You know what they said? When they went to the, you know what they turned in one away. But listen, the Bible said when they, there was a pool of Batista, Mr. Billy, you said right here because you didn't, you were like the man. You know what? You were like the man who said, Lord, when I was coming to the water, I was so slow that every time I got there, people got in the water before me. But now what I'm going to do, some of these on this line ain't sick. They ain't sick. <laughs> they think they're sick, but they ain't sick. But since you said that you are sick, it is my job to minister to you right now. What I always tell you all, the rest of you, Esther, these people come up here, about where you are, come and stand behind them. I, I don't know what God is going to do. They, 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 they may get slain in the spirit. So we have, whether they, they get slain or not, come deacon, whether they, whether they get slain or not, the deacons supposed to be standing behind them to catch them and the event that they fall. All right, at this hour, everybody should be on duty. Come. Amen? I'm not telling you anybody's going to fall. That is not my business. My business is to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, I call for healing. In the name of Jesus, I call for healing. Say I'm healed. Say I'm healed. Say that. In the name of Jesus, you have no dominion. You have no authority upon me. Because by Jesus Christ, I am healed. I am healed. I am healed by the glory of God. Now what you do from this day forward, that's your spot. I am healed. Doesn't matter what the manifestations are, you are healed. If healing starts in your spirit, place in the mind, get in the spirit, and get in the body, you are healed. And you have to believe it. Tell the Lord, thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will heal to Leah or whatever our situation is, whatever our sickness is. I pray that you will heal her Lord, for your glory. Heal her for your own. Raise your hand to God. Say, Father, I thank you for this healing. I thank you for this healing. I believe I'm healed. I will continue to believe. I know I'm healed. 
In Jesus' name, amen. Are you with him? Do you believe that you are healed? Do you believe that you are partly healed or wholly healed? Do you believe how long will it be that you be wholly healed? Long time. So don't come back to the line no more to be healed if you know you're healed. Do you see any manifestation that you're not healed? You don't want to feel the pain in your body? We all have pain. Pain is human. If you eat the raw food, you have pain. But do you believe that you're healed? So in the name of Jesus, the Christ of Nazareth, you have it according to your faith. In Jesus' name, amen. We're just getting ready to set the agenda for how we're going to move in the spirit. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bring this child before you. God. Hallelujah. Last will God to heal it. Hallelujah. God, you need a good cry. 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 Yes, I don't want to show. Lord, heal it. Heal it, Lord Jesus. Heal it, Lord Jesus. Heal it, Lord Jesus. Brother, it wasn't for Jesus you would have been going on there. But you're holding on, right? Hallelujah. Listen to me. Mark my way. Come in a time and say this. This is only a start of how when people come to the altar, there's going to be some fire. There's going to be some things happening. God is waiting on you. God is waiting on us. For us to get ready. For us to put ourselves in the atmosphere and be eager for what God is going to do. Father, in the name of Jesus. I stretch his hands out before you and said we must heal the sick. And I call for the healing. I heal the sick. The sick, I call it for. I call it done. In the name of Jesus, I call it for. I call it done. Tell him thank you. I call it for God. And I call it done. In Jesus' name. And those of you who are on your way, I can't tell you back. Father, in the name of Jesus. Healing, Lord. Healing. Healing, Lord. For your glory. I call for life into this body right now. I rebuke the sickness. In the name of Jesus. God, you said, not by might nor by power, by my spirit. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, perform a creative miracle on him right now. Jesus.